One of the questions that I got in regard to splitting wealth and children after divorce. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that if the marriage contract uh, contain any condition, like a prenup, uh, and there is uh, conditions are written that you will give her that amount of money or you will uh, split the money according to the law of the country or something in that nature, uh, you have to adhere to these conditions in the case of divorce. Uh, that's number one. Number two, if nothing like that, uh, no doubt there is a financial responsibility, but this is, will be different based on the type of divorce that is taking place. Uh, because the divorce can be, as I said, uh, revocable if it's a first or second. This is during her uh, waiting period. In this case, during that waiting period, she is like your wife. She's responsible for you from A to Z with everything. Okay. Uh, even I, I, I agree with the opinion of the fuqaha, even the woman who is nauseous, the woman who is, uh, uh, he, she disobey her husband and she leave the house, he's still responsible for supporting her financially uh, until the divorce and uh, take place and they completely separate it. Uh, because women are 100% responsible from the husband financially. Uh, the only time uh, some of the ulama said she doesn't uh, have any financial responsibility upon the husband if she's the one who initiated the divorce and she make the khul. In this case, uh, she doesn't have any uh, nafaqa, which is uh, uh, the husband is not uh, or responsible for spending money on her, supporting her uh, after the khul take place. So here we go back. If it's a divorce first or second time until that, three cycle of menses finish who is responsible for her 100% okay uh, housing and everything but she's supposed to be live with him anyway she's supposed to leave the house and he will take care of every uh, financial aspect of her life the same way she was when she was married if this is the third irrevocable uh, and it is a third one and uh, in this case Majority of the fuqaha, rahimahullah, said that he only, uh, uh, there is no responsibility uh, for him. In this case, she moved back to her family and so forth. Uh, but other scholars said, no, she has to be giving her nafaqa uh, uh, and housing as well uh, until her idda finish. And I go, uh, I lean towards that opinion because uh, especially in modern days, it's very hard for women to survive uh, uh, like that. Uh, one of the things that I want to say, how much? Uh, how much is not really defined by Sharia? Uh, everybody according to their wealth and their capability. So we will look in his income, what he's capable of to give and so forth. But usually we ask him to maintain the same lifestyle that she has uh, when uh, before the divorce taking place, if it is reasonable. Um, one of the things I always want to say about splitting the, uh, the money uh, it is not halal for the woman to take money that it doesn't belong to him, to him or to her from his wealth, even if it's given to her by force or by the force of law. In front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's not uh, allowed. So she should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to take advantage of the situation. Uh, they should go and ask what is halal and haram. Uh, there is also a concept called al-mit'a, which is extra financial uh, support that the husband give to the wife. And this is uh, even some ulama consider it must in a case of someone divorce his wife uh, uh, and he never mentioned mahar to her or divorce his wife before the consummation of the marriage. Uh, in this case uh, that he give her mita. But I do believe that mita should be giving in modern days, even in a regular uh, case, I recommend highly the person to uh, give uh, any financial support, because even giving a three months financial support is not enough for a woman to stand on her feet and go back to normal. How much it is left to the man and left uh, to the person who will handle the divorce. Divorce is a case. It has to be looked by someone. It's like going to a judge. That's why you have. we always say, if you have a case uh, of divorce, don't just ask a mufti over the phone. Go to the imam, go to a scholar in your community and ask him. If you live in a Muslim country, go to the court. If you live in a country where they have central handling divorce issues, go to it. If you don't have 
Ask the imam to establish a committee to look into these divorce cases. As for children in custody, it's completely uh, 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 yeah, and, uh, based on uh, case by case. There is general rules. The general rules is that uh, mother deserve the custody of the kids. Uh, the mother cannot go to the grandmother from the mother's side, cannot go to the grandmother from the uh, husband's uh, side. But this general rules, but these rules uh, has exceptions and there's conditions. Uh, and the bottom line of it is this, is that we look at the best interest of the child. So if we find that the child, his best interest to be with the mother, to be with the father, to be with the uncle, we will go with that. But this is what we focus on. That's what we care for the most. Uh, I'm saying this because there's so many details on this issue. And as again, we look at a case by case. That's why you have to go to a sheikh who uh, knows about the rules of custody and will explain it to you, inshallah ta'ala. During our Khattab time, uh, there were a divorce case or, uh, and there was fight over the custody. So Umar radiallahu an asked the boy, who do you want to go with? Uh, uh, when he reached the age of Tamiz, like about seven or so. So he said, I want to go to my uh, dad. And that was the dad's suggestion. Ask, ask Umar, ask the boy who you want to go with. So I want to go to my father. So Umar, uh, when he looked at the boy, look at the mother, the mother said, yeah, Umar, ask him why he want to go with his father. So he said, why? The, the boy said, because my father let me play in the street. My mother take me to the kutab where they teach me writing and, you know, math and stuff like that. Then he said, you go with your mother. So he realized that, you know, the kids, the concept of the kids choose, kids sometimes cannot make, or in this age, he cannot make the right decision. They will go with the one who bring them toys, more toys and make them happy or, you know, give me, get them more fun. But we look at what's the best interest for the child. But as general rules, any infant always go with the mom, even if she's not Muslim. Uh, that's at least that what I judge between people with if it's an infant, uh, uh, because it has to be breast, the baby has to be breastfed. And remember, especially in America and Western uh, uh, countries, we're also uh, uh, a citizen of a country where they have laws that uh, regulate the, the issue of custody. It's not just up to you. So... We have to make sure that whatever we do, it will be in the realm of the Sharia and as well uh, uh, work according to the system that we're living in. And a lot of these issues can be avoided if during the contract things were clarified. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us and give us a happy life. Uh, there's more details we discuss when we talk about these issues in Fiqh of Love, uh, which is a course I teach with the Maghrib Institute. Hopefully... Uh, you get a chance to join us, insha'Allah ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.